what's your biggest fear? Time and again, when people are surveyed, they cite their biggest fear after death as public speaking. Uh, many, many people hate the idea of giving a speech. And Moses seems to be one of them. Uh, in Exodus chapter 3, the God of the burning bush tells him that he's going to lead Israel out of Egypt. But listen to his crisis of confidence in Exodus chapter 3, verse 11. Moses' crisis of confidence is this. Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? This begins a two-chapter long dialogue between Moses and the great I Am, uh, in which Moses keeps on saying, look, I can't, I'm shy. Um, I wonder what you would say to Moses. There he is, lacking in self-confidence. What would you do in order to reassure him? Well, on one level, it's completely understandable that Moses lacks self-confidence. I mean, think of his history. Moses' last attempt at leading the Israelites was 40 years ago. He had tried to instigate an uprising of the slaves, and none of the Israelites joined him. They just thought he was a violent maniac, and they left him hanging out on the limb where he had put himself. They basically said, we're not going to follow you, Moses. We'd rather be slaves. That's going to knock your confidence, don't you think? And so, back 40 years ago, his own people had rejected him, but also, obviously, the Egyptians are now rejecting him too, because he had just, in Exodus 2, killed an Egyptian, and thereby he had become Egypt's most wanted man. So, Egypt doesn't want him, Israel doesn't want him, he's got to flee the country, he becomes a stranger in a strange land, as we've already seen. And then for the next four decades, he spends all his time with dirty, smelly sheep, out in the wilderness. He's just a shepherd moving these dumb creatures through the wilderness. You can understand why he's not exactly brimming over with confidence. But how would you seek to reassure Moses in this situation? If you're anything like me, you would be telling Moses, oh, don't be so down on yourself, Moses. You, you used to give some wonderful speeches back in Pharaoh's court. I'm sure you've still got it in you. Isn't that the sort of thing that we would be inclined to say to Moses? Isn't, isn't that how we would encourage him? We try to instill self-confidence in him. The Lord doesn't do that. Here's how the Lord addresses Moses' fears in verse 12. Chapter 3, verse 12, God said, I will be with you. I will be with you. There used to be a saying in tennis that the greatest double team imaginable was John McEnroe and anyone. John McEnroe and anyone could win Wimbledon, you know? If, if you happened to be that anyone, um, wouldn't it be absurd if, you know, you were there in the pre-match press conference, you know, talking about the game tomorrow and you're saying, oh, who am I to win a, cha a tennis championship? Who am I to win Wimbledon? I'm not a brilliant tennis player. You know, at that stage, what would John McEnroe say? Uh, apart from, you cannot be serious, you know? He would say, listen, I will be with you. I will be with you. Enough about yourself. Really, it's irrelevant. That's how the Lord seeks to address Moses' self-doubt. He doesn't try to instill self-confidence. He tries to instill God-confidence. And the Lord tells him, look, this is who I am. Verse 14, he pronounces his name. He is the great I am, the I am who I am. Moses doesn't need to know who Moses is. Moses needs to know who God is. So the Lord reassures him of his own identity. But Moses still has his doubts. And in chapter 4, verse 1, he says, All right, but what if they, that, that is the Israelites, what if they do not believe me or listen to me? And what if they say the Lord did not appear to you? Well, the Lord gives Moses three miraculous signs to authenticate his ministry. That's in chapter 4, verses 2 to 9. But even this is not enough for Moses. And so verse 10, Moses said to the Lord, Pardon your servant, Lord. I've never been eloquent, neither in the past nor since you have spoken to your servant. I am slow of speech and tongue. Now again, if I was reassuring Moses, I'd probably say, Oh, nonsense, Moses. You've got a lovely speaking voice. I'm sure you'll do wonderfully. Um, the Lord doesn't do that. The Lord's different. Again, he seeks to take Moses' eyes off of himself. Verse 11, the Lord says to him, Who gave human beings their mouths? Who makes them deaf or mute? Who gives them sight or makes them blind? Is it not I, the Lord? Now go, I will help you to speak and I will teach you what to say. But verse 13, Moses says, Pardon your servant, Lord. Please send someone else. 
Verse 14, then the Lord's anger burned against Moses. Finally, the Lord is angry with Moses, not for some failure of self-confidence, but for Moses' failure of God-confidence. Moses does not trust the Lord to do in him what the Lord commands of him. And so we come to our phrase today. Uh, The Lord says, well, what about your brother, Aaron? What about your elder brother, Aaron the Levite? Chapter 4 and verse uh, 14. uh, I know that he can speak well. He's already on his way to meet you and he will be glad to see you. You shall speak to him and put words in his mouth. I will help both of you speak and I will teach you what to do. He will speak to the people for you and it will be as if he were your mouth and as if you were God to him. So here is the origin of the phrase, putting words in your mouth. Um, If today I put words in your mouth, you won't like it. Because today the phrase means that I am sort of misconstruing your viewpoint and I'm making you say things that you aren't really saying. That's what it means today to say putting words in someone's mouth. But here, as the Bible coins this phrase, um, both Moses and Aaron are really happy with the situation. Aaron will be Moses' mouthpiece. Moses will be like God and Aaron will be like the messenger of God. That's how God operates, actually. The Father speaks through the Son, his eternal messenger. And so Pharaoh will get a a, a little picture of what God is like when Moses speaks to him through the prophet Aaron. Moses will be like God the Father. Aaron will be like the eternal prophet, the word of God, the messenger of the Lord, like Christ. So finally, the God of the burning bush has dealt with Moses' fears. He has told him how he's going to solve the problem. He will speak through Moses, putting words in his mouth. But what about our fears? Do you lack confidence in the calling that God has placed on your life? Let this story teach you. Don't look within. Don't try to stir up self-confidence. Look out to Christ. He is the great I am. The Christian does not have self-confidence. Not the way that the world thinks of it. Instead, we are able to move out into the world with a boldness, with a peace, with a poise that goes beyond anything that the world knows. We have something better than self-confidence. We have Christ-confidence. 